So, uh, first, there are several things to be announced. Uh, first thing that for the homework three, I will post it on Sakai very soon. Um, please finish that. And uh, uh, for your final projects, so again, so I would like you to send me uh, the status of your team. And that especially so, how many members in your team, no matter you want to work alone or work with other students, and also the category or the options you want to choose for your final project, the mini literature survey or the research or the develop, development or the implementation. So no matter which options you want to choose, so please send an email to let me know. And uh, especially if your plan is to do the research of, or the development of something, so also let me know the, your rough topic. I will also send an individual email to remind you about that because I need to do uh, some statistics for your uh, situation of the, the final project. At the current moment, I'm not quite sure whether we will after the individual lecture for you to do the final presentation. But based on the current progress, it's, it's likely that we will still have that. Any questions? And uh, the third thing that is about the quiz one. So I earlier this week I will send you the email about the my mistake for the grading for one problem, and uh, so I will correct it uh, at my site in my personal Excel file for recording your grades on the different items, including the homework and the quiz also including the future final project and the simulation project. But uh, I cannot uh, correct the, in your, at your side, in your grade book of your Sakai. So please don't worry about that. So I will manually add your score in my final grading. Questions? And uh, the first thing is about uh, uh, optional quiz. So currently I plan to have the, the hold the two quiz for this course, but based on the comments and the feedbacks of your midterm survey, some students, they hope that we can have more quiz. Uh, to, uh, to better test and cover the understanding of this course. So based on your feedback and inputs, so I plan to have a optional quiz three, likely in December. And uh, so note that that quiz is kind of optional quiz and uh, you are not required to attend that quiz, the format will be still the same with the, the what you have taken in the quiz one. And this optional quiz three, uh, its grading will still be the same as before. And uh, so your final grading of the quiz part, I will select the two highest score from this three. So for example, so if you think that you already very satisfies your score in the first two quiz. That is totally fine. So you don't need to necessarily to attend the quiz three. And uh, but you think that you are kind of done 
not quite satisfied with your last uh, the previous two uh, the first two quizzes so you can try the quiz three and to try to get the higher score so in any case i will select the uh, highest two scores for your from your three quizzes and then to count it in your final grading okay so this is about the optional quiz three so any questions No questions? Okay, so now let's continue our simulation example for the out of order execution. And uh, I think, where we were last time? This is where we were last time, right? So cycle four, so just uh, have to refresh your mind. So actually we have the two reservation stations. Two reservation stations, why is for the Adder unit, another is for the modification unit. They okay, and uh, so now we are in the so, so first, let's go back to the clock cycle one to make it uh, consistent. So, clock cycle one, we fetch the first, uh, the first instruction, and then clock cycle two, we decode that. And uh, to check that whether we have the available positions in the reservation station for the multiplication. And then we test the register list table and then put the source, the two source uh, register their values. And the valid information to the two source positions of the, the X entry of the reservation station. And then the R3, that is the destination register, we rena rename it to the X. And then we, and that's, that's allies is putting the tag, it's putting the tag of the R3 in the uh which is last ta table and then for the clock cycle three we we'll begin to execute the first instruction and uh we Decode the second instructions. And again, to send is to the source register information. And here, one of the source register is R3. That is what we are just begin to execute. So its value information is zero and the value is X, right? And similar for this another one, source register. And then for the destination register, we know that is we set is that the tag is a that is what's the entry name in the source in the reservation station in the for the adder adder unit right okay now so now let's consider about the block cycle four so for the first instruction, it is still in the execution stage because it takes the six clock cycles, right? And then for the second instruction, since 
uh, one source register is valid information is zero, right? Actually, we know that we cannot execute that, right? It's in the wait. Right? And for the third instruction, right now we can begin to decode in the decode stage. We know that one source register is R2, so we can broadcast it here and send it to the source file. And for the another one, R6, we can get its information from the register last tables and get its information. Write it, uh, fill it in this entry, corresponding entry of the, the source register for entry B. And now, now for the, for the destination register R7, so right now we can rename it to the B, right? In the tag. Okay. And now we know that for this entry B, that corresponds to the register R7. So the the two source valid information, actually they're one. So we know that it's ready to be executed in the next stage, in the next cycle. Right? Any questions? If you have any questions, just uh, unmute yourself and uh, interrupt me. So this is for the four the fourth cycle, and uh, also for the uh, fourth instruction, we already will begin to fetch that from the instruction memory. And you can see that using this mechanism, so actually the third instruction is to begin to you will be execute execute out of the order from the next clock cycles. While for the second instruction, it will be still in the wait. Okay, so the cycle five, the first instruction, we are still in the execution stage. Okay, second instruction, we check that. Okay, so, so one source register here is still in the uh, invalid status, so we're still in the wait. And uh, for the third instruction, we begin to execute that, right? And notice that it we assume that the add addition takes the four cycles. Okay, it's beginning to in the execution stage. And for the fifth instruction, uh, for the fourth instruction, and uh, right now again we filled the information in the in the reservation station entry. And here is one empty entry is C actually. We this entry to well this entry name in the in the reservation station, we will put it as the, the rename it for the destination register of the, the fourth instruction, right? R10 rename it to C and the two source register R8 and R9. So we will get their information, the values and their bits. And the valid bits information to fill the, the entries in the source register uh, in the reservation station. Right. Any questions? And also for the fifth instruction, right now it's in the fetch state status. Okay, so for the, in the clock cycle six, again, for the first instruction, still in the execution stage because it takes six cycles for the, to finish the multiplication. And for the second instruction, so we are, it is still in the wait status because the, the valid bit for one source register is still zero. It's still not ready to be executed. For the third instruction, yes, it's, we are executing that. 
it takes four cycles. It's right now it's just in phase two cycles. And for the fourth instruction, fourth instruction, and that is the R10 here. Here, actually, right now it's already begin to be executed. Also, it takes four cycles for the uh, yes, four, four cycles for the addition operation. And for the fifth instruction, you now we're going to decode that. Notice that. So the next empty entry in the source, uh, in the reservation station for the multiplication is the, the Y. So we name it to the Y, rename it the destination register R11 as the Y. And there's a two source register R7 and R10. So R10 and R7, both of them, the valid information is zero, right? It says the R7. And R10. So we filled the, this information. To the reservation stations entry. Notice that when the R7 and R4, notice that R7 and R4 right now, they are in the execution stage for to calculate the new results. Actually, you can, you can go back to see that. For example, for the R10, in the clock cycle five, when we, when we begin to execute that, notice, notice, the change of its, valid, its validation bit. When we begin to execute that, we field the information of source register to the reservation station. You can see that here is change, right? It's a, the corresponding valid bit of the R10 changed from one to zero. So because we, we design such mechanism that to make sure that when we know that something is in the it is in source register and already begin to decode that the value base will change to zero. It will be changed to zero because we know that this destination this destination registers right now it uh, it will be updated to some new value, but the way before it is updated to new value, so we are set is valid validation bit is zero because this is because. It is probably just like in these examples. For the fifth instructions, we need the new value of the R10, right? We need new value of R10. So assigned to the zero bits, it can be used. This information can be used for the next, when we execute the next, decode the next instruction. So in here is the M U M uh, multiplication, MUL instruction, and to, And to make sure that the R tens, the R tens status right now is in the updated stage. So not in updated status, this information can be included and be considered when we want to use the R10 as the source register for the current instruction. This is very important. Any questions?
you need you need me to re-explain something? Uh, professor, just a small question. Like, so in this first problem, like, uh, so it will go up to even from even to e six, or like it the execution finishes at e four for the uh, first line. Yeah. You mean for the clock cycle six for the current clock cycle? Yeah, I mean for the like for the mult mult multiplication r one r two to give r three. So like it, you, you said that it's going to take six cycles. So it is going to up to yeah. e six or it finishes at e four. Uh, here the six clock cycles means that just for the execution stage, okay. it went six cycles. So go back here. You can see that in the six six clock cycles just to calculate. So right now you already have the. the R1 and R2 available, right? They are updated information available. So right now, we input those information, the one and the two, to the arithmetic units of the multiplication and to perform the operations, the one times two. And we assume that this multiplication needs six clock cycles. Okay, okay. Any other questions? Just feel feel free to to ask me any questions about this simulation procedure. So this is a bit complicated, and I hope that everyone is clear about that. No questions? Okay. So now let's continue. And uh, so also in the clock cycle six, so we begin to fetch the six instruction, ADD R5, R11, R5. Then, so clock cycle seven. Again, the first instruction, and we are still in the execution stage. And again, the second instruction, ADD, it's still in the weights. Third instruction, ADD, it is still in the execution stage because we need the four clock cycles to finish execution to perform addition. And uh, fourth instruction, ADD, is still in the execution stage because it, again, we need the four cycles for that. And the uh, fifth instruction, to calculate the R11, so we can check the R11 is tag is Y. Tag is Y, and we know that. So it's two of these source registers, they are invalid now. Their value is still not available yet. Okay, so it's in wait. And for the sixth instruction, we begin to decode that. And uh, notice that here. Notice that here. For the sixth instruction, R5, notice that here actually its source register is also its destination register, right? And also notice that for the second instruction, its destination register is already R5. Is that right? 
to take a look at what happened. So here's a key point here. Before we begin to decode that, so actually R5 in your register lies table, its tag is A, right? Its tag is A. And actually that is to corresponding the information of the, the second instruction, right? Now notice that for the fifth, uh, for the sixth instruction, Again, we need to update the R5. And also, a tricky thing that here, it once it's one of its source registers is also R5. Right? So actually, we want to use the, the to be updated R5 value to calculate the new R5 value. All right? So how we handle this situation? Actually, we will notice that what happened to the R5. We will in create another M entry in your reservation station. And now the R5 is, its tag changed to the D, this new tag. And this two source register, Y is the A. A is what? Actually here you can see that previous A is represent the information of the R5 in the third, in the second instruction, right? So now we put that to the A to the as a tag of the source for the D, right? So here using this way, actually we established the dependency information in this so in this reservation station, right? And another source is just as R11. So we know that R11 is here, so its tag is Y. Also, it is currently unavailable. Any questions? Do you need me to explain? Questions? Okay. So now the clock cycle eight. Is what happened? Okay, notice that what happened now. So for the clock cycle eight, okay. So after long wait, six clock cycles. So now for the instruction one, MUL right now, the calculation for the multiplication finally finish. Right, one times two. After six clock cycles, we get the result is two. Okay, that's very, very good after such a long wait. And so we will, at output end, we have two here and also notice that also here, the tag information X will be also be ready here. And then what that have, what that mean? So actually that means that, so now for the X, For X tag, we know that its updated value is true. So now we will broadcast this information. We will broadcast it to both the register lies table and to the two reservation stations. Take a look again. So X and the two right now they will be at the output end of your multiplication unit. And we will broadcast this information first to the register lies table. Right? 
and also we broadcast it to the two so, uh, two reservation stations. Also for the two, so we will first check which one, which entry in your in the register last table, and which entry in your in your reservation station. They right now they are waiting for the tag X value. We found that here. We have that right. Also here we have that. Okay, so after find that, we broadcast the new value of the two to them, right? So okay, so I can tell you that I already have the your desired value here. So then I update the value, also I updated the value the bits. Let's see it again. X to broadcast to register last table, also broadcast to the each the each of the two resource reservation, each of entry to check whether some of them depend on the X. Check we found two, we identified two, and then to send the value of the two here and change its value bits. Right, and also because right now for the entry A of the, the register of the, the sort of, of the, the reservation station for the addition, so now one of its source becomes available. So right now, two of these are available here. Source are available here. So now we are ready to execute A. Actually, that's corresponding to the second instruction in the next cycle. Any questions here? No questions? This is a very quite important step. When we finish some execution and can begin to broadcast the information to the corresponding positions. Okay, and uh, also simultaneously in the, what happened in the clock cycle eight, but the second instruction Right now we are still in the wait state, because, but we know that uh, in the clock cycle nine, we will begin to execute the second instruction. And also, happened in this clock cycle eight, and for the addition operation for the third instructions, also we already finished. We spent four clock cycles to finish execution. And now at the output end of your addition unit, so the result comes out, two plus six, we take the four clock cycles to get his results at eight, and the corresponding tag is B, right? Again, we will broadcast it to the register liars table and to the, and the two is for the source in the, in the reservation stations. And then check that here, we have the B. We have the B. Right? And check, find these two places. We broadcast the eight. It's eight information. This eight value. 
to here and to here, right? And they change their value the bit zero to one, right? Right? This is how the broadcasting ha happened. Any questions? And notice that even so one source for the tag Y in your reservation station is available, but another source is still unavailable. So we are still not ready to execute to calculate the, the Y information there within the X, uh, in the next clock cycle. And similarly, for the in the clock cycle three, the execution for the fourth instruction is still ongoing. And for the fifth instruction, I eleven, that's why it's still not available to be uh, ready to be executed. And also for the R five, for the six instructions, again, two of these sources are not ready. Not available, so we are not ready to execute that so in the wait state. And for the clock cycle nine, let's see what happened. Okay, for the first instruction, when it finished the execute, we begin to write it back. Okay, fine. And for the second instructions, that is corresponding here. We can begin to execute that. The four clock cycles, right? For the third instructions already finished execution, so we can begin to write back. And for the fourth instruction, okay, it will be finished, right? R10. For the fourth instructions, press only here, right? And we'll finish that. We know that. A plus nine after cross cycles, we calculate the results is 17. And we put it in the end, out of the end of your additional unit and also the tag information is here at out of the end. And again, we broadcast it. We broadcast it. Broadcast it here. Not yet previously, this is not this is not ready yet. And now once we have that, we broadcast it here. The source of for the entry Y in the reservation station. Okay. And for the fifth instructions, still await. Six, uh, six instructions still await. Okay. And now, since for the entry Y in this the reservation station, both of the two sources are available now, so we can begin to execute that in the next cycles. In the next cycle. Okay, so then clock cycle 10, for the second, the first instruction we already finished all of its processing. For the second instruction, so right now it's still in the execution stage. For the third instructions, also we finish all of its processing. For the fourth instructions, we're right now in the final write back stage. Fifth instructions, right now, 
is begin to execute, and the six instruction is still in the wait. Okay. And the and the clock cycle eleven, so the similar things happened. Twelve cycle, uh, clock cycle twelve. Okay, so now notice that for the second instruction the here, what changes here? Because for the for the four for the second instructions, actually after four clock cycles, we already get its value. Right, two plus four is six, and uh, the tag A will be broadcast here. Right, it will be appeared at at the blend and the broadcast. The way the broadcast, we know that it will broadcast well here right and that's the reason why right now for the entry d its value base become y source of one of its source value bits becomes one and the value is six because it depends on the new value of the a right now we have that broadcast and update all right but but at the same time, because another source is still not available, this why so for the entry D, we can still not begin to execute that. And then the clock cycle thirteen. For the second instruction, it's right back, right back, right? And for the fifth instruction, uh, uh, we're still in the wait stage because it takes six cycles to finish. Sorry, for the fifth instructions, right now we're still executing that for the multiplication. And for the sixth instructions, still wait. The clock cycle 14, Continue to execute the fifth instruction and the sixth instruction is wait. Okay, now take a look at what happened in the clock cycle 15. We finish its execution, right? For the Y, that is corresponding to the register R5. After six instructions, six cycles, we finish calculate a times one a times seventeen. Its result is the one hundred thirty six, right? So now y has been calculated, right? And then it will, what happened? It will be broadcast here, broad uh, at its values here. Then here and also and also here, right? Update your register last table and update your so, uh, reservation station, right? Broadcast and update. After that, so we know that. So for the entry D in your res uh, reservation station, we are ready to ca begin to execute that. Okay. And then clock cycle 16, we'll begin to execute that. Execute that. Execute that. And in the at end of clock cycle 19, so we finish execution, right? For the D, and we know six plus one hundred thirty-six is one hundred forty-two, right? And then we broadcast this this information to the register, the last table, right? And they also make that is from change from zero to one. 
the final finish that. Okay, so here is the entire position of the, the simulation of this six instruction when we utilize the, the out of order scheme. Any questions? Any questions? Any place do you need to me to re explain again? No questions? If you don't have any questions? So let's go back to check the uh, previous what we have for the very high level design guideline. Let's go back to revisit revisit that. I think after seeing this example, you have the you may have the better understanding now. So. Resist the renaming. We call that what we do that. In that in this example, we associate tag with each data value, right? Right. Think about our tag. So notice that so when the data is available, so there's no tag there, right? For the R1 and R2. But for, first, for each destination register, actually we have the tag. And this tag actually, so that is the entry name in your, in your reservation stations, right? We put the dependency information of this destination register in the reservation stations entry right this is how the tag is used for and also like the need to buffer instruction until they are ready to execute. Insert instruction into the reservation station after renaming. Right? So the so the registers info the instruction information is here. Right? This information is 
is reserved in your reservation station. Third point, instruction need to keep track of the readiness of source values. I mean, we do broadcast the tag when the value is produced. Right? And the instruction compares their source tags to the broadcast tag. If match, source value becomes ready. This is what happened here, right? In the close cycle eight. But when the information is ready, we broadcast the tag, right? And uh, each one in the reservation station, they will compile the tag. And once we medically match the one, we will update the value, right? So this is how we followed this guideline point. And the first one, the first one, once all the source values of instruction available, send the instruction to its functional unit. And the instruction wakes up when all the source are ready. So this is what happened happened here. When we broadcast it. And for the instruction two, actually, because here, this will become available. Notice that ADD in the reservation station A is ready to execute next cycles. For the, for the entry A right now, it's ready to execute the next cycles. We begin to wake it up and begin to execute that in the next close cycle. Right? So that is all the points that we map, the guideline point we mapped in this simulation example. Any questions? So I hope that the, of the class, so you can revisit this example again and again. And, uh, and especially I hope that if you want to truly understand the meaning, I suggest that once you read this and then you can try to replicate, manage the write that on the paper, replicate the entire process to to like to feel the source the the, re, the register last table and the field the, the the reservation stations and to update that by yourself and then to compare with how these simulation uh, examples do to check whether you truly understand it's the key part or not. Once you can replicate this example by yourself, that means that you get the correct understanding for all of what happened. Okay, and uh, furthermore, so 
You can also consider that you can write code, no matter C or Python codes, to mimic this example again. Or even you can, that, actually that means that you, you build a very, very, very simple scheduler to implement the function of such out of order. Then you can even to try some other different input instructions. Then to see how it works. Any questions? Feel free to let me know if you have any questions for this example. Okay, if no more questions, let's continue. And uh, so the rest, the last slides of uh, of this lecture, it is on the, uh, the modern out of order design, like in the Intel processor. So you can see that. So we have some the just the renamer here, right? You've, to achieve such the functions here. Also see that, so the TLB, instruction TLB. Right, that is what we already covered in the virtual memory here. Right. And also, we will discuss the BTB in the next lecture. Also, the is the some um, the simplify simplify the figure. You can see that where's the renamer here? In the renaming features. And reorder. And so you have the one L1 data cache, one L2 cache, level cache here. And the register file. This is another uh, processor, the alpha processor. You can also see that just a rename here, right? Just a rename here. And uh, what we'll discuss the next is the branch predictor in the next lecture. The level one cache, you can see that here is the, the uh, set associative cache, two way set associative cache, and the level two L2 cache. Also, here is have the also have the instruction cache. Notice that so typically we have the, the instruction memory and the data memory. Also, you can see that you have the, the set prediction. Remember that what we covered before. So how to further improve the advanced optimization technique for the memory? So we, have, we can predict the set. This is what we what do they have this. Any questions?
Okay, this is MIPS instruction, MIPS architecture, and uh, again, so just renaming. You can always see that this is the, the, this such the out of order execution is always very, very popular used in the commercial processors. See the TLB here on the virtual memory, right? Data cache. Instruction cache. Okay, so this is IBM Power. IBM Power's processor. It is widely used in many, like the, especially for the uh, game stations, like in the, the Xbox adopts the IBM Powers. Also, you can see that. So, uh, see that is the how to dispatch dispatch that. Also, it take it adopts a two level cache, L one and L two. Branch. History tables. So that is what branch history. That is about the branch prediction. That is what we will discuss in the next lecture. How to uh, handle the control hazard. Okay, so that is the end of the, the lecture eight and. Uh, Next is the lecture nine, the control hazard. So we will just uh, uh, discuss the few slides since we will run out of time soon. And uh, so here's what we will. Again, it's about to want to solve the issue happened in the pipeline. How to handle the control dependency hazard, and again, this is the big picture in the entire computer systems. Okay, and uh, actually, so so a key idea or the most widely used idea to handle the control hazard or with spend the, what, what is control hazard very soon is to, and the key idea is to do the prediction do the prediction so-called branch prediction so now let's see what happened so what is the control hazard and uh, typically, this is happened in the way way instruction is the branch instruction, like to the BEQ. Yeah, this is a MIPS format instruction. So, BEQ two three label that means that BEQ means branch if equal. If the, the value of the, the register number two and the register number three, these two values are equal and then we will go to some the labeled instruction for example we have one labeled instruction here label and uh, like mul one three four and in that case that means that the next instruction will be executed will be here this is the branch instruction. So this is branch instruction is widely used because for the for loop, 
but for the while loop, you must have that. And if you want to achieve such function, you must have some, you need to compare something, right? To do some judgment and then to determine whether we have the for loop continuous or we are terminating a for loop. So when you do that, when you translate that, that high level language to the assembly language, you will use the branch instruction. Okay, and now notice that for the branch section, so that means that when we are to execute that, we must know the value of this two, right? And then to perform the calculation. We must know this two. Okay, but then what happened? So now let's take a look at what happened in this example. When you have the pipeline, when you have the pipeline, so notice that at the clock cycle two, so you just fetch the information of the number two and the number three, which is number two, three here. Fetch that from the register file, right? But then that means that at the at as early as you as possible, only after the clock cycle three, you can get the results whether two register number two and register number three their values are correct or not, and and then you can make the decision. But since right now you are in the, you are using the pipeline, so at the clock cycle three we need to already begin to determine which instruction we need to fetch, right? This is IF, this is ID. Because right now you're in pipeline, so when you begin, to, when you finish the decode, begin to decode the instruction, B construction, you also need to fetch the next instruction. And then we'll execute that. But now, actually, logically, we know that what should be fetched should be that the either the labeled one or just the next sequential one, right? So we need to know which instruction to fetch next. But we can only know that after the clock cycle three, but we need the, our decision in the clock cycle two. So this is a control hazard happens. Right? Any questions? More questions? Okay, so next Tuesday we will continue to discuss that how to handle this control hazard. hazard. So actually, two basic idea first again store. For any hazard, any dependency, you can always store that. And the second is the branch prediction. That is what we will discuss in detail. Already performed the branch good branch prediction and how to further improve that and also the BTB branch target buffer. How to do that? And the dynamic static branch prediction, dynamic one. And that is what we are discussing. There's a lot of uh, information. That is what we discussed. Next class. Okay. So, oh, by the way, so I, I will have the already uh, 
uh, as you already received an email, my office hour is uh, for this week is rescheduled to uh, today is just after the class from 10 30 to 11 30. So, if you have any questions, you can you're free to ask me in my office hour. Okay, so that's the end of the today's class. So, have a great weekend. See you next Tuesday.